Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. We've got a lot to get to tonight and our big story here as we kick off our top seven stories, severe weather leaving damage in its wake. As a matter of fact, we're getting a view from our viewers all around the area. Take a look at some of these pictures that were sent in to us. Uh, and again, you can see some of the damage up around the Sunbright area. You see the gray skies. You can see a number of trees that have been uprooted. Uh, several buildings also damaged as well. But again, and gives you a good image of what we were talking about earlier now as we saw those storms move through. There was a report of a tornado. We'll be talking more with Ken coming up here in just a little bit. Also, Morgan County 911 alerting drivers in the Sunbright area to stay off the roadways. Highway 27 through that area has been shut down. Right now, traffic being rerouted, they say as best as possible. Uh, but they are noting that crews are working to clear those down trees, down power lines, remove any debris out of the roadways. Crews are working to get it cleared as soon as possible, but again, stay off of 27 through Sunbright until all that can be cleared up. Also, we're getting pictures. Uh, this is from uh, Misty Ellis Schilling, and you can see more of the damage around the Sunbright area. Again, these pictures have been coming in, and this really tells the story as those storms were coming through. We were tracking them for you. Started just a little bit after 5 o'clock, and you can see the debris in the roadways that needs to be cleaned up. But again, this pretty much tells the story of what they're facing in the Sunbright area. So let's get more on the track where the storms are now, what we can expect as far as the later hours in the evening. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist. Ken Weathers. Yeah, but we're still tracking this same cell. It's the same parent cell that made its way through Morgan, Scott, Campbell, Claiborne, Bell, now into Bell and Whitley and excuse me, Bell and Harlan County, Kentucky's severe thunderstorm warning at this point still could be some 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts. So please make sure you're in your safe area here with this cell as it's moving northeast very quickly at about 60 miles per hour. So between RJ and Page Elementary area, Molus, we're talking could be some one and a half inch size hail or bigger with this storm cell as well as that's moving to the northeast. Let's get a little bit wider perspective here. I want to show you that's all that we're watching at this point. Just some showers back to the south and west through Spring City and Dayton. So Bledsoe, Ray, Meigs County up into McCreary County, Kentucky. That is not severe, but I do want to point out we're not done yet. We have a tornado watch, which means conditions are favorable, that they are possible for additional tornadoes to develop between now and 2 a.m. Doesn't I mean, everybody in this area will see them, but that potential is certainly there, and we will keep a close eye on that as we go through this evening. We basically have to wait until this cold front, which is not even to Nashville yet, moves into our area. What we have to watch for is those small little cells that develop ahead of the cold front. That's what we've been watching. That's why we had those isolated tornadoes there. The longer we go without seeing those individual cells develop, this is most likely going to turn more into a line of storms that comes through. Doesn't mean it's any less of a threat. In fact, it would mean probably a wider threat of some damaging wind gusts that could move through the area. So to estimated timing of that six timeline shows by nine o'clock, that line is most likely moving across the plateau, sliding into the valley by the time we join you again at 11 o'clock. And then after midnight, early morning, the severe threat over with, but still could be some locally heavy rainfall in some spots as this pushes through. A little quieter tomorrow, Bo, but a lot cooler. More on that coming up. All right, Ken, thank you very much. And again, we just want to remind you, uh, the storm team will be watching that line of storms. So if we need to cut in, we're going to keep you up to date. Also, we'll have the very latest for you at 11 o'clock tonight, as Ken mentioned. But again, we'll be staying on top of this for you throughout the evening to make sure that you know exactly what's going on. Of course, you can also monitor online at WAT.com. And it's always a good time to download our free weather app. Just scan your screen or search Knoxville Weather in the App Store or Google Play. Again, we'll check back in with Ken coming up here in a little bit. We're also keeping a close watch on the interstate for you in West Knoxville. This is a live look right now through the TDOT Smartway cameras. An overturned truck. This is the ramp from I-40 eastbound to I-640 east. Again, this is on the west side. You can see the truck right there in the middle of your screen. It has shut down that ramp. So here's something you need to keep note of. If you're in West Knoxville and you need to get to the north part of Knoxville, the north part of the city, you're not going to be able to use 640 right now. Instead, you're going to have to take I-275 northbound. So take 40 east into town. This is another live look for you from the TDOT Smartway system. You can see they have that uh, 40 east to 640 east ramp closed. This is the Hollywood camera. They're forcing everybody to stay on 40 eastbound heading into town. From there, 
you can pick up 275 north and that will help you get around all this but right now just a significant backup if you don't have to be on the interstate this is a live look back near paper mill uh, you can use alternatives think about middle brook as one option for you uh, also uh, western avenue uh, kingston pike even north shore just some possible options for you but again uh, we'll continue to watch that for you but 40 east to 640 east ramp in west knoxville closed through that overturned truck all right, our next Big 7 story for you right now. One person and two dogs are dead after a house fire in the halls. It happened this afternoon. Real Metro fire crews responded to the fire along Andersonville Pike in the halls community. This was around 435 today. We're told crews arrived to find the home fully engulfed. Seen the flames seen shooting through the roof. And you can see in some of these scenes here exactly what we're talking about. Uh, those flames, we understand, were strengthened by some strong winds. Uh, we're told crews worked through some difficult weather conditions to gain control of the blaze and limit the damage to those nearby buildings. Unfortunately, as we mentioned, one person, two dogs, lost their lives in this fire. Knox County Sheriff's Office is now investigating the cause. We will, of course, stay on top of it and keep you posted. Also tonight, Jefferson County answers in that deadly shooting there. You know, we've learned the name of the man arrested and more about what deputies discovered when they were first called out to the scene. First, the suspect, Jonathan Mays, according to the sheriff's office, charged with first degree murder and attempted first degree murder, plus being a felon in possession of a gun and using a gun in a felony crime. Also, the sheriff's office just revealed the deputies got the call a few minutes before 10 o'clock this morning at a home in the 100 block of Thorn Grove Pike. We're told they found two people with gunshot wounds. One was near a camper and was already dead. Deputies put the other victim into a patrol car, then drove that person to meet an ambulance that was waiting nearby. Now, the ambulance was about a quarter mile away, we understand, because of the threat of a shooter still in the area. After surrounding the trailer in a brief standoff, we're told Mays turned himself in and was taken into custody. As of this evening, the condition of the victim is unknown and the identity of the person who was killed has yet to be revealed. More details on a big change for the Kingston Fossil Plant. Uh, we knew the plant's coal-fired generating system was being retired. Now we're told there are already plans in place for the facility's future. The utility plans to replace the coal-fired power plant with what TVA is calling an energy complex. CEO Jeff Lyash calls the current coal setup at Kingston a, quote, workhorse of the past several decades, but says it is time to move on, aiming to meet the increased power needs of our growing area. Now, thinking about renewable energy and flexibility, TVA's new energy complex will house and generate energy using natural gas, solar energy, and battery storage. We're told this will be a first-of-its-kind facility. Now, that's because the generators can be brought online quickly as power demand goes up or down, either from more demand from customers or to support renewable energy options. Now, the CEO talked about the decisions and video messages sent out to the media this morning. We're building thousands of megawatts of renewables. They need dispatchable energy standing behind them 24-7. And so retiring Kingston and replacing it with modern gas-fired technology, technology that in the long run may be hydrogen fueled, it can be backfit with carbon capture when that technology is available. This benefits energy security and uh, sustainability here in eastern Tennessee and across our whole seven-state footprint. Part of the process so far at Kingston included an environmental impact study. We should note that TVA is choosing to move ahead despite a recommendation from the EPA's acting regional administrator last week, urging the utility to revisit the study. Of course, the Kingston Fossil Plant, best known for the December 2008 spill that sent a flood of water, mud, and waste ash pouring into the river, smothering neighboring properties, even crushing several homes. Now, it was an expensive catastrophe that added to a growing chorus of voices were about the long-term impacts of coal-based energy. Environmental groups have also pushed back against TVA's gas turbine decision for the site, urging instead the utility focus more on renewable options rather than another fossil fuel. Speaking of clean energy, Union County Schools, one of the first school districts in the region adding electric school buses to its fleet. Union County Schools officially plugged in two new additions today worth around $400,000 apiece. The district was able to get a huge discount thanks to the 2022 EPA clean school bus rebate, which helped 10 Tennessee school systems purchase electric or propane run buses. 
Powered solely by electricity, we're told these new buses provide a cleaner mode of transportation for students and better air quality for the entire community. For us, being from an impoverished area, poor county, having technology like that here in our county is uh, incredible for us. Uh, just to show these kids what other opportunities are out there besides just diesel, that the electric buses are something that's, that's coming. Uh, and we'll just look forward to using them in our fleet. Two new electric buses will serve students at Paulette Elementary School. We're told they each hold 71 passengers and have a 135-mile range. We're wrapping up our big seven list for you tonight with a huge investment for a West Knoxville post office. With that announcement, we're learning Knoxville Processing Facility will not be going anywhere. U.S. Postal Service putting $9 million now into the local center to improve mail and package flow throughout the region. You have been following concerns since last October when we were told the Postal Service would review the distribution center off of Wise Garber. But after a thorough review and after receiving support from Congressman Tim Burchett and other local leaders, the U.S. Postal Service announced that the facility would remain open and modernized, meaning there will be no career employee left, uh, layoffs. In addition to expanded and streamlined package processing improvements, we're told the $9 million in investments will also go toward new workplace amenities for U USPS employees, including new lighting, renovated bathrooms, and break rooms. You know, as we mentioned, Congressman Burchett has been very vocal, even sending a statement to the U.S. Postmaster about the facility review. He since shared a statement saying he's glad for this investment, but cautious. He said, quote, I will keep monitoring how these changes impact folks in my district, and I'll continue advocating to make sure the U.S. Postal Service does everything it can to take care of its employees in East Tennessee and the people who rely on its services, end quote.